To you, dear friends, in the name of Jesus, who will come to judge the living and the dead, amen. It is so good to be back here in the Lord's house with you as I was gone last week. What a joy it is to be back in worship. I want to preempt the sermon message by having you or inviting you to get your writing utensil ready. At some point, I will give you a list, about a half a dozen verses for reference, aside from the ones that are readings today, that just play to this idea, Jesus is coming, and you can look up those verses or do what you will with them later, but those verses are coming. Our text today, St. Matthew, the 25th chapter, verse 13, pretty easy to remember. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This, dear friends, is our text. Well, it's a word you may or may not be familiar with, and it's a word I want to bring to your attention today. The word is called Maranatha. Maranatha. It's an Aramaic word, which is also used in the Greek. It's a word which means, come, O Lord. And St. Paul references this word in 1 Corinthians 16. When he says, come, O Lord, he uses the word Maranatha. And after this week, And the things in our news and the national tragedy that has taken place, maybe our hearts cry a little more fervently today, Maranatha. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. Come, O Lord. It's a word which the early church used, and it's thought that they used it almost in replace of the greeting Shalom. Instead of Shalom, peace be with you, they would say, Maranatha. Come, Lord Jesus, and come quickly. Well, the parable of the ten virgins, the wise and foolish virgins, reemphasizes this point for us today, dear friends. The Lord is coming. Come, Lord Jesus. And the Christian church has prayed this for centuries. Why? Well, because we are filled with the knowledge and light of this truth. Jesus is coming. He is coming. He promises to come and restore people, restore his creation to perfection, to judge the living and the dead, to bring back God's righteous reign and rule. Come, Maranatha. We live in a world that seems to be the stronghold of Satan, don't we? Sin sick, death ravaged. But it was not always that way. Nor will it always be that way. We know that only Jesus Christ can come and bring about life. He can bring life to death, hope to despair, restoration to replace ruin. We are reminded as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, to keep our eyes fixed on the things of God's reign and rule, things of the Spirit to keep our lamps ever burning brightly until Christ returns. That's the joy of our text today, the promise which is to come in its full revelation. The scriptures speak of this coming. The scriptures speak of this coming day of judgment, the coming of the great and terrible day of the Lord. And one of the verses that I have come across that I think is interesting how the the Old Testament writer Malachi pieces this all together in chapters 3 and 4. I won't read them fully to you, but in chapter 3, the title is this, The Day of Judgment. And chapter 4, the title is The Day of the Lord. And what's in between this sandwich of the Day of Judgment and the Day of the Lord? Tithing. (laughs) Tithing. Robbing God. So I, the Lord, do not change. So you descendants of Jacob are not destroyed. Ever since the time of your forefathers, you have turned away from my decrees and have not kept them. Return to me and I will return to you, says the Lord Almighty. But you ask, how are we to return? Will a man rob God? Yet you rob me. But you ask, how do we rob you? In tithes and offerings, you are under a curse, the whole nation. So what is on the bookends of God's word to them? to give tithe, to not rob God. The coming of the great judgment of God. The promise that God will return again. That's what sandwiches this understanding for God's people. It's Maranatha. 
God is going to come. The Lord Jesus will come. So what's your Maranatha moment? What is it for you that you cry out, Maranatha, I'm ready for you to come, O Lord. Maybe it's a, a sin sticking it to you. Maybe you have a, a, a wrestle, a struggle with a daily temptation. You just can't shake. You can't get rid of it. Sin has been sticking it to you day after day. The devil accuses you and haunts you. Maybe you pray Maranatha over that. Come, O Lord. Maybe it's death. Death infiltrating your life, your family, your loved ones. Maybe you pray Maranatha. Where have you been lackadaisical when it comes to your faith? When you should have been at the ready for Christ's return. And you pray, Lord, Maranatha. I think it's easy to forget the words of our text today. It's easy to forget those words, the promise that the bridegroom will return. He's been delayed so long, it seems as though he will never make it. You ever feel like that? You ever feel like the promise seems to wear off? A little bit of that, that excitement seems to fade the longer it goes on? I think that can happen to God's people. It can happen in the church. We become complacent, lazy. We become kind of in, uh, settled into our own way and we forget there is a promise. He will return. He will come again. We forget about that promise. We forget about Maranatha. When we are, we are in the midst of the woes and worries of this life. But there's a plan. There is a plan, dear friends. The bridegroom will return. The master of the house, the king, the shepherd, the owner of the vineyard, this Jesus will return. There's a plan. He will come again with glory to judge the living and the dead. He will return to this earth so that death will experience death. Death will be swallowed up with life. What a grand and glorious thing. What a, what a promise. No other religion claims. We have a, a, a promise from God that his death means our life. That Christ will come to bring about God's full redemptive plan of salvation. Wow. A plan of restoration for you and for me. No more sickness. No more death. No more crying. No more hurting. No more tears, as Revelation says. This fills us with joy. Joy and excitement and energy that our God plans to come. So what do we do? We live in the now but not fully yet realized plan of God. It's coming. It's now but it's not fully yet. Well, dear friends... We remember. We remember God's plan. We keep ready. That's the thread of Scripture. Be prepared. Keep ready. This God we serve doesn't operate in Disney timeline. <laughs> what do I mean? Not the circle of life. For God, it, we live in linear human history. God created the heavens and the earth with the beginning. God will return with an end. God is coming. God made human history with a starting point and an ending point for you and for me. We know that as an Adam, all die. You and me, we will all die. But in Christ, thanks be to God, all will be made alive. In Christ, there is reason to celebrate. There is reason to be excited about the bridegroom returning. Even though we don't know the day or the hour, we still rejoice at his coming. We still watch. We're ready. Our lamps are burning brightly as God's own people, as a people who have been brought into faith in Christ. We are ready, ready for the great and glorious day of Christ. So what do we do? What do we do as we think about our own Judgment, as we think about Christ's return. Well, we do the work of the kingdom. We live as baptized believers, clothed with the robe of Christ's righteousness that covers all of our sins. Even our baptismal liturgy plays into this idea of being watchful and ready. You remember hearing these words whenever we have a baptism? Receive this burning light to show that you have received Christ who is the light of the world, Live always in the light of Christ. Be ever watchful for his coming. 
that you may meet him with joy and enter with him into the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which shall have no end. What a great thing that even our baptismal liturgy remembers this coming of Christ. Our lights burn brightly as we daily live with Maranatha on our minds, on our hearts, in our actions, in our words, in our thoughts. It encompasses everything we do. This Lord Jesus is coming. He's planning to return for you, to undo death, to give you life, to promise you all the things of his work on the cross for you. It's interesting how we treat death. Sometimes we treat death like an old friend. We say, well, at least they didn't suffer, or at least they won't have to suffer anymore. Or what a blessing that he or she could die. Think about that. We call death a blessing only because life has been so wrecked and reeked of ruin. Death is unnatural and wrong and can intrude her into God's plan. Death remains a curse even when it frees us from sorrow and pain. So with Jesus' second coming, we are living with Christian peripheral view, the view that Jesus will undo this death. And we live with this view of Jesus in our daily walk. We maybe fear the unknown, but with Christ, we have been granted life. A Jesus who rose from the dead, who will promise you a bodily resurrection as well. That in the verses that God gives to us in the scriptures, a number of verses that I would like to share with you, there is a promise, a promise of the, the return of Jesus. We heard about it in our text. Matthew chapter 25, the sheep and the goats. Second Peter chapter 3, Malachi 3 and 4. First Thessalonians, which was in our readings today, chapter 4 and 5. Second Timothy chapter 3, Revelation 21. These passages all speak about the coming of Jesus. There is certainly more than that, but these are a snippet of the theme of Christ's return. So for you and I, our wicks are trimmed. We are ready. There is no oil in the lamps of the unbelievers. They're unprepared and unwatchful. But for you and I, we are ready. We are ready. In our baptisms, we live as God's ready people. We confess in the Apostles' Creed that we believe in the judgment and we believe in the return of Christ. We live as ready people. We live as people who cry Maranatha. So dear friends, God's blessings as you live each and every day with the hope as you look up and see the hope of the soon coming Lord Jesus Christ, as you await with joy the resurrection of your own body, as with lamps burning, hearts ablaze, prepared through devotion, worship, and prayer, you live ready, you watch each and every day for the coming of your Lord Jesus Christ. Maranatha, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Amen. Now may the peace which passes all understanding guard our hearts and our minds in Christ. Amen. We would stand and make bold confession of our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed.